Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending on, uh, on short notice. My name is Joseph Chuckle. I'm the Chief of Police. Um, I'm going to start today by just uh, letting you know that normally, uh, you all know, I, I take questions at my, at my press conferences or press briefings. I will not be taking any questions today because the amount of information that I have at this point is very limited. And uh, I'm going to be making the comments based on the things that I know. And I, want, I felt it was important for, um, for this community and for uh, this department to hear from me right now. It's, a, it's an especially critical time. You can see that I have the entire executive and command staff of the Austin Police Department standing behind me right now, as well as City Manager Spencer Cronk and Assistant City Manager Ray Ariano that are here as well. And I wanted to take this opportunity to address the very recent statements made by the Travis County District Attorney. I have been intentional not to make statements out of respect for the criminal justice process and the grand jury proceedings as they have proceeded uh, in this regard. While I respect the grand jury process, I am disappointed to hear the DA's press conference statements regarding anticipated indictments of APD officers related to the 2020 protests. As a department, we asked these officers to work under the most chaotic of circumstances in May of 2020 and to make split second decisions to protect all participants. The size, scope, and tenor of the crowds was underestimated by management. Officers were prepared for hundreds when instead they faced thousands placing them in potentially the worst possible circumstances to manage escalating crowds. While certainly not every moment of the protest could be classified as a quote-unquote riot, there were significant portions of times that the crowds were riotous and violent. Property destruction and looting took place over several days at the beginning of the protests. Rocks, frozen bottles of water, bottles containing bodily fluids, commercial grade fireworks, and other objects were hurled at officers and into crowds in an attempt to seriously injure. If you recall, a recent federal court jury convicted an individual for attempting to deploy a Molotov cocktail in front of our municipal court building, which is attached to this building, APD headquarters, during these same protests. And I believe in many instances that officers were simply attempting to protect themselves and other protest participants. Additionally, the weapons provided to our officers did not perform in all instances in the manner anticipated. APD recognized this and now prohibits the use of less lethal munitions in crowd control situations. I am not aware of any conduct that given the circumstances that the officers were working under would rise to the level of a criminal violation by these officers. We are at the beginning of the criminal justice process. As we move forward, these officers must be afforded all of the same protections of any defendant, including the presumption of innocence and the right to a speedy trial. I am confident that as these cases proceed, all relevant evidence, including hundreds of hours of body-worn camera video and other video sources, will be made available in court and to the jury. As we go through this process, I have been and remain supportive of the hard-working men and women of the Austin Police Department. I also want to reemphasize my commitment to transparency and the rebuilding of trust between APD and the community. Again, I'm extremely disappointed in today's announcement and will be waiting to hear further details from the District Attorney's Office. Thank you all very much for attending. 